Hi guys and welcome to Having Fun with Chemical Theory. This is Activity 5 for Year 8 where we're going to be looking at the periodic table. Now in this activity we're going to be utilising the periodic table and trying to find our way around it and what sort of information the periodic table shows us. Okay so here's a periodic table that we've got. Now you'll notice um, it's made up of lots of different colours. Don't worry too much about the colours. Um, we're going to use the basic ideas, so, but generally we tend to look at the first 20 elements. You'll see that there's a big purple um, rectangle that's actually blocked out a number of elements. This isn't going to be looked at until year 10. Now, the first thing that we need to know about the periodic table is that the elements can be split up into two groups. Now, the two groups are basically separated by a boundary layer. Now, this is shown by the blue line. Now, the two types of groups are, to the left of the blue boundary layer, we have our metals, and to the right, we have our non-metals. As well as this, what else do we know? Well, we know that if we run down a column from top to bottom, we've got something called a group. If we run from left to right, or across a row, we've got a period. Now, we also notice that all of the columns are given specific numbers, and you can see that in black along the top. We run from 1, 2, all the way through to number 8, right at the very end. Now, what we notice is that all the elements in group 1 and 2 are metallic, and they are very, very reactive. On the other side, group 6 and 7 are also very reactive, but they are the reactive non-metals. Now group 8, which is the one shown in blue, is very unreactive and basically is called the inert gases. They, they don't do anything. Now the reasons for this will be found out later in year 9 and 10. So what else does the periodic table tell us? Well, we know that all of the elements are placed and they are given a specific um, symbol to identify them. Instead of using their names, we use letters. Now, the letters basically denote what the symbol are. Now, they can exist with a single letter, or if that letter has already been used, it goes on to be using a second letter. Now, the first thing that we need to understand is that the symbol, the letter for the symbol, is always in a capital letter. If it then has a second letter after it, it's always in a lower case. So for example, if we look at the sim symbol that we've got down below in the blue box, we've got Na. Now that stands for the element sodium. Now the N is a capital, the A is basically a lower case. Now if we just put N on its own, that is the symbol for nitrogen. So we could get confused if we didn't put a second letter. Now the other thing that you will notice when you look at the periodic table are there are a number of numbers which are associated with each of the um, elements in each of the symbols. We've got a number on the top of the symbol and we've got a number on the bottom of the symbol. The number on the top of the symbol is the atomic number and that tells us the number of electrons and the number of protons. The number on the bottom is the atomic mass. Now the atomic mass minus the atomic number will tell us the number of neutrons. So from this, by using these two numbers, we can work out the number of protons, the number of electrons, and the number of neutrons. So let's look at the, the example that we've got below. So we've got the symbol sodium, which we know has the um, symbol Na. Now, what else we know is that it's got, um, its top number is 11. Now this tells us the position in the periodic table, but it also tells us that it's got 11 protons and 11 electrons. Now the bottom number, if we take the atomic number 11 away from 23, which is the atomic mass, that will give us the number of neutrons. So the atomic mass is 23 minus 11 will give us 12 neutrons. So if you add the number of protons and the number of neutrons together, we get an overall answer of 23. Now if you remember back, we learned that neutrons and protons all each have a mass of 1. So by combining the protons and neutrons together, we've got the overall mass of the element. Okay, so here's an example. What I suggest you do is um, pause the video here and have a go at these two examples and see how you go. All right, pause the video now and see if you can work out the number of protons, electrons and neutrons for Be, beryllium and Zn, zinc. Hi, welcome back. So how did we go? Well, let's just run through the answers. So for beryllium, for example, one, 
the number of protons, which we're going to um, symbolize with the P, we look at the top number. So there are four protons. The number of electrons is also denoted by the top number. So we've got four electrons. The number of neutrons is the atomic mass, the number in orange, minus the atomic number, the number in blue, in red, sorry. So we get nine minus four, which means we have five neutrons. How'd you go? Excellent. Okay, so let's look at that example two. The number of protons, that's the top number, 30. The number of electrons, also the top number, 30. The number of neutrons is 65 minus 30, which should equal 35 neutrons. Did you get that right? Well done. Okay, so that gives you a brief overview of the periodic table. I hope you found that useful, and uh, there will be other exercises which will allow you to work through the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons in this activity. Thanks for watching. Bye.